Miss Kate Brodick, how are you? I am doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm great. So it's it's nice to finally connect with you, and you're all the way in Ontario, Canada. So congratulations yes. on being my first guest out of the States. <laughs> I love that. I'll take that any day. Sure <laughs> and I'm see. actually through Canadian Tim Hortons. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> So you're um, you're a number one selling real estate agent in that area, and uh, you seem to be extremely successful. So I just want to jump right into it. Let's let's you know get into the, the nuts and bolts of what it is you do, and and honestly, even if you want to go into a backstory of how you got into this you know industry. Yeah, actually, it was um, it was kind of a fluke to be honest. I was uh, a registered dental hygienist prior to being licensed as a real estate agent, so no relation to each occupation actually probably couldn't be more different. Uh, one very based in healthcare, the other one obviously sales. And um, I started to kind of inquire about uh, getting licensed for my own personal reasons. It, I actually, at the time, didn't envision uh, leaving dental hygiene to pursue a career. I was doing it because my husband and I at the time were starting to build our real estate portfolio. And I thought that, hey, you know, if I'm licensed, then I can kind of do the things myself. I don't have to hire it out. And um, through that, I, I fell in love with it. And it was uh, a very quick love. It was like love at first sight yeah. type of thing. And then it went all or nothing. So I, I got licensed. Actually, this is my 10th year full time. I saw so 10 years ago around this time uh, when I got my license, I got busy really quickly, uh, really quickly. I probably a little abnormally quickly than than most. Um, I just dove right into it and I had to make a really big decision. And that was to continue my career as a hygienist or to lose that career and start building on something that I basically was just getting my feet wet into. So I took a leap of faith and here we are and I have not looked back once. That's awesome. It's all it's interesting too to hear whenever someone gets into it from an investment side and then it turns into a, you know, a complete shift and now you're doing it full time as you know, your main hustle. So, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. And you know what, it just, it offered me so many different avenues that, gave me autonomy and, and kind of made me tick. Whereas not that I didn't love dental hygiene. I love the patients. I love the relationships and the connections that I built, obviously, but I could still have that in this career. And then I got to entertain more of that creative side of me, yeah. which is the marketing and advertising, yeah. doing this with people like yourself and just uh, opening and expanding the horizon of what real estate can really be outside of just buying and selling houses. And um, I just love it. So yeah, that that's, I mean, that's exactly what happened to me. I was in oil and gas for 10 years and then I made a shift into marketing. Didn't think I was really going to do it as full time. And then it just blew up into something I was passionate about. So I can completely relate to you on that, you know. And even from yourself, like it's, you don't realize it's so funny how you fall into something that you didn't realize you love. So it's yeah. like, it's meant to be right. So. Yeah. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about this because I work with a lot of, uh, I just, I, I see a million real estate marketing horror stories <laughs> and I'm sure you do too. Oh, uh, but let's talk about that because I work with a lot of, you know, real estate agents in, over here in actually I'm in the state of Louisiana, but you know, we do a lot of stuff with those, but I've seen so many people, um, do all the wrong things on the side of sales and marketing in your industry. So let's talk about that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm all game for it. What do you want to know? <laughs> oh, I just want you to tell me some horror stories, some do's and don'ts. I mean, whatever, you know? <laughs> oh, you know what? Like I should probably publicly apologize for my first reels that I put out there because <laughs> they were probably <laughs> cringy as some people would say, but you know what? Um, I'm a big believer that it's so hard to put yourself out there. It is so hard. And the public is not kind. No. And, you know, everybody has something to say. And you really have to know who you are and what you stand for and believe in yourself and, and what you bring to the table to overcome some of that online bullying that happens when you try to market yourself. And so, you know, I always try to see it from both sides, even when, you know, maybe the side that's coming at me isn't exactly kind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are just trying to find their way. And so for me personally, I think that real estate is about selling yourself. Um, and when you sell yourself, you gain and capture the trust and the relationships from the people, which allows you then to sell the product, which would be the homes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, 
probably most known now for like doing the reels. So the reels for me allow me to incorporate kind of borderline controversial topics in real estate, allowing that entertainment factor, but then being able to write a professional write up of what's happening in the market in relation to that, I guess, last slapstick humor that I personally love so much. Like I'm a little bit of a sarcastic individual. I, I'm pretty light. I don't take things to heart. Um, and so for that, you know, I've been able to incorporate that into my own personal uh, marketing online. Uh, and it may or may not be for a lot of people. I, I struggled at the beginning trying to see how I could fit it in where it was me speaking my truth versus me just copying what was online. Yeah. Um, and that's why I like to do a mix of that and, and just regular video promoting either my team or the services we offer. And then of course, static and carousel posts. Like I just find that marketing, you can just, you know, take it in so many different directions in our, in our profession. Um, and there's so many great people out there, like, especially in, I mean, I follow a lot in Canada and the United States. I mean, I'm a big Ryan Serhant fan. <laughs> um, I'm sure you would be too, considering you're in the States, but, uh, I don't know. Why don't you tell me from, from an onlooker, what yeah. would be, well, I mean, kind so, of the, you know, right? well, <laughs> unless it's good to me, I'm cringy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why, that's why I reached out to you because I mean, I see so many, um, people just, constantly try to sell and this is across all industries across the board and you know what you're doing is you're educating you're entertaining you're creating co a connection and a relationship online with someone which is going to then defer them to think about someone when they do think about you when they need someone you know who does what you do and I've seen so many people make the mistakes and I think a lot a lot of it and I'm sure you've heard this a million times in the in the industry it's like when they try to recruit new real estate agents it's all about the training and the tools, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like any other industry, like, and they get people in, but they're not, they're just teaching them, you know, how to sell or like the sales pitch, but you're, it's all about developing some type of connection. Right. And so like, when I looked at you, I was like, well, she'd be a great person to talk to because I see she's doing this. Right. Um, and you're, you're able to, you know, not only, you know, educate your audience, you know, who may be a potential buyer or seller, but you're also, able to educate people who may be wanting to get in the industry or, you know, or the worst, here's the worst thing I see a lot is the people that have been in the industry so long and refuse to evolve, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that, I, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and agree with you on that one. And, and, it, you know, growth is a bit painful. It's a little bit scary. It means putting yourself out there in ways that you're not used to. And that can be really scary as well. And, you know, to your fact of, of, you know, just selling, selling houses is boring. Yeah. Well, selling anything is boring, be right? Honest, right? Well, it's true. Like you look at some of these feeds and it's like, boom, boom, sales, 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 sales. Well, I mean, you can go to the Cape Rodic team if you want to see all of our listings and our purchases, but that's not me. And that's certainly not who my team is. Like we're moms, we're entrepreneurs, we're business owners, we're content creators. We're a bunch of women who've come together collaboratively with the same goal at the end of the day. And that's to reach a, a level of fulfillment within ourselves and to, you know, make some friends along the way and to, you know, it's not about the followers. It's about the relationships and, I, and some of my strongest relationships actually funny enough have actually curated from online yeah. from having simple conversations like this yeah no that's awesome I, I do have some like real estate specific questions since we're talking about oh. this like so at what point in your career did you shift because I see this a lot too where people are just overwhelmed and then they make that jump to create a team you know and then start start, um, you know, hiring a buyer's agent or, you know, or seller's agent, you know, and then start, you know, basically just funneling that into, you know, something to where they can, you know, spread their wings a little bit more and focus on the entire brand and delivery instead of just transaction. So how did that work yeah. for you? How, how far in, you know, just because I, I know real estate people are going to listen to this and they may have all these questions, you know? Yeah, of course. And um, I, I was actually pretty early on in my career. So um, when I was licensed, I was only licensed for three years and I actually hired my first administrator. And it was a balance of needing to hire somebody because I was becoming so busy that I didn't want my service to fall and I needed somebody to assist me on the administrative side. 
But I would say more than anything, it was because real estate is a very lonely business. It's there's no set hours. Um, you're kind of working it yourself. And I was used to being in a collaborative environment as a hygienist with dentists and assistants and, you know, all these people where we could, you know, bounce ideas off of one another and we could share in each other's wins or if we're having a bad day, we had someone to speak to. And I was used to that and I really missed that. And so the idea or the premise of building this team was less about selling more and more about having a culture of like-minded individuals that you could, you know, share in this experience with, because it is a really lonely one. And through that, you know, I, I grew quite quickly. So this is, like I said, year 10, we've been um, together as a team, this will be eight years. And through obviously um, the team building, we've created this culture. And I would say more so now than ever, we have a very clear path as to what we want to do. And that is to provide that exceptional service to our community and our clients and to feel fulfilled together. And that's really when it started. And I didn't expect it to be where it is today. I, I don't, I think that vision has changed, but it, it definitely started early on to make myself surrounded by people who had similar values as I do, because who wants to go through life doing it themselves? You know, it's better to do it when you have people around you. Well, and I couldn't agree more, but there's so many people who are just there. I mean, I've met so many agents that are like, oh my God, I need an assistant. Oh my God, I need a buyer's agent. But they refuse to take that next step. What would you, what would you advise them on that? Like, what would you say would be the kind of, I don't know, just any type of advice that would be like something to get them out of that, you know, get them out of their comfort zone. Oh, you got to You just got to pull the trigger. You just got to do it. Like stop second guessing yourself. Think about growth. Think about your future. Think about the vision you want. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not a, um, I'm not much of a person who, who says it and then doesn't act on it. I, I really think about what I personally want. And if, you know, I wanted more time. And I mean, that's another thing, you know, if you hire someone, you you do get more free time. So more free time with your family, more free time with, you know, doing hobbies or things that you love to do or sell more if that's what your goal is, right? I mean, at the end of the day, but I mean, to sit there and to say, oh, I, I got to do this, I got to do this and then not to act, you got to really sit back and think like, is that what I want? Like, what is holding me back? Is it the expense? Well, I mean, the expense is going to be covered pretty quickly if you're if you're that run off your feet that's normally like, the first thing that's normally always the excuse right I just don't think I can afford that but what people don't realize is that's extremely minute amount of money compared to the time that you're going to recoup for it and can put back into it and quadruple it you know what I mean yeah. And also just think of the, like, how much more rested and more focused you're going to be on the tasks that you're genius in, because let's be honest, like my genius is not administrative. My genius is being in front of the people, the clients, the marketing, that's where I excel. So if I'm going to hand that business off or that task off to somebody who is far superior than I am, we're going to flourish together. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just one of those things where people have a hard time delegating, you know, like it's letting go, yeah. of, especially if you, you've created your entire book of business and culture all by yourself. And then you're like, okay, well, it's time to take this next step. But I don't really want, you know, to let go of this, even though you're doing all the things, you know what I mean? Yeah, all the things. And yeah. it is all the things. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, so who um, who would say, or if any, do you have a mentor who like, you know, who may have guided you through anything or do you, or are you kind of self-made on trial and error or is it a mix of everything? Uh, you know what? I'm going to say I was pretty self-made at the beginning. I had okay. a broker of record at my very first brokerage who I leaned on um, a lot. Like he was, he was a, he was a friend. He was a good ear. He was um, my biggest cheerleader. His name is Martin Sarkissian. I'll give him a shout out because he deserves it. He's amazing. Um, but I would say that I was pretty self-made and I had a very clear vision as to what I wanted. That vision did change along the years. I would say that now I have a few mentors and it's the first time in my career where I can say I look up to people and uh, they coach me and they cheer me on and they direct and guide me. I have a business coach. Um, we hired Kathleen Black from um, Coaching and Consulting. And so uh, not only is Kathleen a mentor, but so is Marissa. She's actually my direct coach. And uh, Coach Ron James is my my team's coach. Awesome. And then uh, Ryan and Nikki and Dean Saravelli. So they're the founders and broker record at Revel Realty, which is the brokerage that I just joined last year in the fall. And I'm now opening or have opened two team offices with them. 
And I look to them as leaders in the industry that, you know, I, I really um, respect their guidance and I really respect their opinions. And it's almost like I feel like I've, I've, I've leveled up the table that I'm sitting at and the people that are around me, I, I consider not necessarily, I don't like to use the words better than me, but I yeah. strive to have their excellence. And so for the first time in my career, the last year, I really do feel like I'm, I'm where I need to be. And I have people around me that can really mentor and guide me when I need it. And that's a good feeling. Yeah, it's something really, it's really crazy how that happens, right? It's like, you think you have it figured out, but once you realize when you're at that next, that pinnacle, that you're like, okay, there's still people that can help me in these specific avenues that I may, you know, need just a little push in this area, or I may be a little, you know, a little lower on this better, you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's funny how a lot of people never get to that point to where they're like, I've done it this long, I have it figured out. But once you are successful, it's like you can collaborate and take it to the next level when you're you know surrounding yourself with people who may have a little more time and skin in the game on this you know side or a little more time in the industry on this side you know a good perspectives and that was a big one and you know I'm humble enough to say that I I needed a little kick in the complacency uh, before going to travel and I did I I I shied away from any help because our industry can be um a little bit competitive and not always in the in the most Ooh. um good intentions. I got to hit on this real quick. I got to hit on this. (laughs) All right. So you said that you said the most important thing that I completely didn't even think about until just right now, competitiveness. So here's what I hate the most about. And look, I use that term loosely. Um, The most about people in sales, especially in real estate is everyone is so like cutthroat with each other. When, if they realize that there's enough, how many agents are in your area? Uh, There's over 320 now, I do believe, in Brantford and Brant County. Okay. And how large is that, like, uh, mile radius? Uh, It's not not really. It's Well, we're in kilometers. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm terrible with measurement as it is. Um, I would say uh, it's it's really, it's like it would be a very, very small city. Um, That's still a lot. Yeah. Like we have over a hundred thousand population in Brantford and in Brant County, it's just over, I think 40 or 50. So, I mean, it's not like it's a massive area, lots of land, but not necessarily population based. So, okay. but you do have a lot of agents for that area, you know? So what happens is these people realize, I mean, they're just so cut through, and it happens here. So we have over 1200 agents in this Metro area where I'm at, or four, I think around 1400 agents. And you know how that works. Probably only 20% of them do it full time. Right. But like, and, and it's like a, a population of like a half a million, I believe, in this entire area. And so you look at that and you're like, okay, these people realize that like, and especially now because the market's weird too, like right? the inventory's low. I don't know if it is in your area, but it's, it's, it's insane. But like these people, instead of collaborating, they're always fighting against each other, even inside their own brokerages. And it's just so crazy to me. So when you said that, I'm just like, man, if these people just realize how to work together, everyone would flourish instead of you know, every, it's, it's like the, I learned getting into marketing and working with agents, how like much drama there is behind the scenes of people talking about each other and hating on each other and not willing to work with each other from the title no company to the mortgage company to the real estate agent, you know? And it's so unnecessary. I mean, like, it's almost like they look at your success as, as a reason to rip or tear you down when there are some wonderful agents in our area that I trust and I collaborate with. And, you know, if they ever needed me for anything, I would be there in in the drop of a hat. And that's the way it should be working is we should be working towards um, working together because at the end of the day, we all have clients. We all want our clients to be happy and sooner or later, you're going to have to come across each other. So why not play nice in the sandbox? You know, why not just work together? Why not just keep it professional and leave the drama out of it? It's any job though. I guess any profession, any sales profession, you're going to get that, but you just try to rise above it as best way you can. Well, there's, there's, there's a few sides to it, right? There's people that only want to be transactional. There's people that are become way too emotional. You know what I mean? Like, and, and like, it's, it's finding a balance, you know, you got to be emotional with your client, you know, taking care, you know, keeping their best need in mind, but also you have to remember to be transactional too on the business side. And some people just can't seem to find that balance, you know? 
No, no. And I think that that's, um, you know, some emotional immaturity on their parts. You know, you need to, once again, I go back to, you need to know who you are, what you bring to the table, what you offer. And you have to, you have to really know you yourself as a person. And I find that a lot of people, they deflect their hate and negativity onto others because they have a lot of wounds that they need healing and they're not just not putting in the time or work on themselves. And you know what, the rest of us, we just sit back and we look and we just shake our heads and say, well, you know, I wish you the best regardless. And hopefully one day you figure that out and I'll be here when you do. Yeah. Do you have any horror stories that you want to tell at all? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I probably do. Um, I need to be very careful with what I say, but yeah, uh, we can, we I can always find out. Uh, I had no, oh God, it had no, there's not even names to be said. <laughs> Actually, um, uh, it'll go down in history as one of my favorite stories. Uh, I was selling a property and um, it was tenanted and the tenant, um, you know, hadn't been very good to the owner and, you know, wasn't paying rent and, put him in actually a pretty bad financial position. And um, we were, we were asked to sell the house cause that was what they had to, they, they couldn't carry it anymore. And the tenant was obviously very upset by this. And we, we tried our best to alleviate any of that stress and let them know we understand it's their home. And, but you know, the seller does need to sell, like things aren't being paid. And uh, these, the tenant did just about everything they possibly could to stop this stale, including dropping his pants in the middle of the floor with some business inside the pants during a showing. <laughs> and say the feedback on that showing did not go very well. And any feedback uh, to this day was never very good. So the yeah. tenant pretty much grossed out everyone who came through the door, including uh, the, the agents themselves. So yeah, that was yeah. an interesting one. He was, he was coined Dirty Santa. He looked like Santa Claus, yeah, so. <laughs> did y'all ever get that sold? <laughs> Uh, eventually it took a really long time. The market wasn't nearly what it is now. And it took a buyer to be able to see past that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. There's, and gross there's, there's, at the same time. And, and very gross at the same time. But uh, it will go down in history as one of the Cape product team's uh, worst listings humanly possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this market. So, uh, what are you guys looking, you know, like for here, it's an inventory shortage. Um, you know, I'm sure it's the same there, but it's, I haven't seen, you know, and I've only been in the marketing business now for going on seven years and, and I've worked closely in the real estate too. So it's like, I've only, I've never seen it this last this long, you know, as far as the, the, yeah. um, as soon as something goes on the market, it's immediately selling, you know? Yeah. It's, um, it's a pretty heinous market. Uh, you know, I, I've, he I've heard people say, oh, it must be a great time to be a real estate agent. Well, no, if you're listing properties, but we have, we have buyers who have put out 10, 15 offers, you know, they are getting buried alive out there. And it's, it's really sad, actually, you know, um, this is not an easy market to navigate. You really have to uh, have some patience and foresight. And even if you have all of that, it's still as a buyer, um, it's deflating, it's defeating. Uh, you know, housing housing prices have inflated so much that I start to question and and wonder like how are how are our kids going to have houses? You know, how are people, the average Canadians or the average American families, going to be able to afford? It's really divided us, um, you know, here in Canada and maybe the same in the states because low inventory. But it's it's not a market that I think most real estate agents or anybody for that matter really want to continue because even if you're selling a house, you still have to buy again. And, you know, it's not an easy time to navigate. I think most of us would rather a much more level playing field where the buyers have the opportunity to fulfill conditions, you know, where they can put in a condition of sale on their property, where when you go to sell and then, you know, the next step is to buy, you're not overwhelmed with that anxiety, wondering, yeah. am I going to find a home? So I, I, you know, I don't think that this is fun for anybody really, um, yeah, and, and we're, we're really hoping that this starts to level out because these prices just aren't, they're not normal and I don't think that they can continue. No, I don't think they're realistic. And, you know, I don't know. I feel like we're, we're in the verge of, it looks like the market's starting to correct itself as far as the S&P, you know, and all that. So I think we're on a verge of a correction. And I think it's going to be a correction in all markets across, you know, you know, from, you know, every single level, but especially real estate. And I mean, the auto industry is the same way too, right? It's It's like, there's a shortage in, in vehicles, there's a shortage in housing. And then the prices are, you know, you're looking at 20% over the value of the home. And, you know, a lot of cases. 
or less, the vehicle. <laughs> or more we're seeing. And, and it's, yeah, it's, um, I mean, we, we just had an, an interest raise um, hike, not not by much. It was a quarter point uh, last week, which I, I really don't think is going to do much of anything. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of foreign investing that they're um, kind of putting policy on the table as to, you know, if, if our average Canadian can't afford a house or doesn't have a house and, you know, how do we how do we get them in first? Um, it's yeah, there's there's got to be something that they can do to to correct this. I know that infrastructure is a big one here in Canada. We just don't simply have enough houses for our population. So until we build more homes and, and get more affordable housing, um, you know, I, I don't know how this is going to stop, but yeah. I certainly hope it does. What's your favorite type of uh, home to list? Like, I, you know, just put it the average, average home, like that move up buyer. So obviously I'm I'll I'll be. 39 this month. <laughs> oh, not hey, exactly. So I'm right behind you. No worries. No worries. Uh, yeah. So, I, and so I have three children. So my kids are age two, four and, and eight. So my two and four year old are turning three and five next month. But um, the average home, uh, you know, is usually with, with sellers that are in similar um, lifestyles that I'm in. And so I really love working with families who are looking to move up to their next family home and just your average family. That's my favorite. Uh, it, there's just a, a connection there in the relationship. Uh, we, we kind of understand where we're at, we are in our lives. Um, and, and, you know, that's pretty much it. Like, I don't, I don't think I really have like uh, a particular home, but I'm also really loving uh, investment property. So I love people being able to build um, out their portfolios and grow real estate wealth. Um, so whether that's, you know, single family um, or multifamily up to about a, a triplex, um, I do love to work with those types of clients um, who are looking for maybe more foresight into their future, uh, maybe retirement. But yeah. um, outside of that, I would say that that's, that's probably my favorite. Well, I feel like the, there's there's a huge like emotional difference in each like layer of buyer, like the first time home buyers and it's, it's experience in itself. Right. And then you have that the, the next time to where it's like you said, they've created a family and they need to step up and it's time to, you know, get something a little larger with the, maybe a backyard, you know, whatever. And then you have the people then at the point where they're downsizing after the family's out. of the, So it's like there's three I feel like there's three major types of, you know, emotional connections there that are completely all different, but all in a positive way, you know? Yeah. And I love, and I really do love working with them all, even seniors. Like I had a, I had a really interesting January where I actually had a lot of senior clients and they bring just such a fresh perspective and they're so grateful, have so much gratitude towards yeah. you. And, you know, they just, they just love to see the hustle in you because it reminds them of themselves when they were younger. And yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, I really, it's, it's hard to even pinpoint. I, I love it all. Yeah. I, I really do love all of my clients at yeah. every age group. Well, tell me about, um, tell me about Kate in the, in the, you know, behind the scenes, what do you like to do? Like on a person, on your personal life? I am very boring. Yeah. <laughs> Do you <laughs> work too much like me? <laughs> I, yeah, well, it, it's not even just that. I, I think, uh, you know, social media, we put out there what, what we want to see. Yeah. And I think most people look at me as maybe a little bit more of an extroverted person than I actually am. I'm actually quite introverted. Uh, I, I like small crowds. I have a very small circle of, of friends and um, I'm on a Saturday night, I usually have people over and it's a games night. I love board games and any kind of game like that. I love just hanging out with my kids. Um, I'm a very much a one-on-one -on -one type of person. I prefer that over like really large crowds. Um, I'm kind of like that crystal loving hippie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm really in tune. Like I'm very spiritual. I love um, anything and everything to do with like the universe. And I'm just, I'm very like holistic Outside of that, I am I am pretty boring. I am in bed by 9 30, 10. I am up between 3 30 and 5 in the morning. I like a slower pace at home and a fast pace in my career. So I, it's kind of the yin to my yang in my personal life. Yeah. No, I hey, I can completely relate there. I mean, I feel like once you kind of find your lane in the in your work pace, like and then you have to set because for the longest time I was like too many hours. And like, and couldn't separate work from home, you know, in that first, you know, in the first stages of your hustle, when you're trying to figure it out, you're yeah. like, okay, I got to find some balance. You got to be around the kids at the house, you know, have dinner, not just like grind all the way to 10 PM and then, you know, get no interaction. It's funny how you got to start creating those, you know, perspectives and kind of make the shift in the quality time and the work time, you know? Yeah. And just, you know what, it's pretty, like, I, I find 
happiness and the very simple things. I, uh, and then once again, I guess that changes with age too, right? I mean, in my twenties, would I love going out on the weekends? Of course I did. Yeah. Now I'm like, oh my God, I have to get dressed up and go out. Are you kidding me? <sighs> Terrible. No, I'd rather be in than watching Netflix, right? So <laughs> balance. Well, I get enough a- excitement job it's all about the balance right yeah any uh so do you have any advice for people who may be wanting to get in real estate do you think that there's you know something that they need to do do you feel like do you feel like any particular career uh careers transition better or do you think you know they should get into it blindly do you think they should have some kind of customer service um experience before they jump into the you know bulk of it do you and here's another thing what do you think about people blindly getting recruited by brokerages and just walking in and, and just drinking all the Kool-Aid? Yeah, I mean, the I'm not much of the Kool-Aid drinker, <laughs> only because I've watched it too many times. And yeah. I think that um, I think you have to really genuinely love people. I think that whether it's, you know, whatever uh, avenue you're coming from, and I look at my team, I've got everything from, you know, healthcare to um, even one of my agents was in the military to, you know, um, different other sales jobs or, or whatever, like even entrepreneurs who ran their own businesses. I think it's more about um, the relationship you have with people and and genuinely wanting to connect and serve others because you have to be somewhat selfless in this position because you're out there looking for a, the largest asset for somebody else but i i do think that if you were a new agent coming into this industry i would strongly suggest starting out on a team and the reason why i say that is because it is such a multifaceted job between it, it first of all you're it's not even a job i shouldn't even call it that it, it's a business you're yeah. running a business there's so many different facets between the financials, the marketing, the administrative, you know, there's so many avenues that you have to cover that I find coming onto a team, you have that collaborative culture that you can rely on. doesn't mean you have to stay on a team forever. I mean, actually, the, they say the average person stays on a team for less than five years, whether they switch teams or they go out on their own. But I see the rise of emerging team brokerages really coming in strong where we have actual brokerages like the ones that I'm opening that are a, a, a small culture. It's not just everyone comes in. It's like a a group of people who have the same values working towards the same goals and the new agents. And I I have only had new agents except for one on my team. And I see them flourish so much more in this environment with the support of the team through administrative leadership and myself that I really think that it it gives them the confidence to move forward because one of the scary statistics is 80% in Canada, at least 80% of realtors that start don't make it into their third year. And I have to ask yourself why. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, it's the same here. I don't know the exact number, but I guarantee you it's the same. And it's 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 the support and the culture. I mean, especially if someone, like you said, especially if someone's walking in immediately, you know, blindly and then trying to do it by themselves and like do all facets like you were talking about and being completely overwhelmed or not making enough revenue to be sustainable. You know, I've seen a lot of people just become them and, and not make it in for in you know all types of reasons that's exactly right and it, it, i i just find um the pace seems to be picked up a little bit faster when you have uh, you walk into a team that already has those systems in place and can kind of show you and train you because realistically when you sign up with a brokerage i mean i have agents who came from all different brokerages and they say the same thing you know because they're running the business themselves, like the training is very minimal and, you know, you almost feel like you're thrown to the wolves. Uh, It's almost a sink or swim kind of um, mindset. And I don't think it has to be that way. I think it can be collaborative. It can be a positive culture. So I, I honestly, I really do believe that teams are the way to go. If you're coming in as a new agent, I completely like, I completely support that because I feel like that, you know, walking in and you're just not going to get the full, amount like okay so training the real training is actually doing the job right and like you're not going to get that unless you hit the hit the ground running and a lot of times starting out without any type of support team or anything no one's going to give you a listing no one's going to give you a buyer to call on you know it's like it's it is a lot I feel like it was a lot more comforting a lot more you know encouraging for someone to to jump on you know a team like you have and, and you have that entire support and not and you're also walking into a brokerage office full of people who all have the same mindset not people all trying to work against each other too 
That's right. That's right. And, and once again, it's it's all about where you join. And I mean, every every culture is going to be different. Um, I do believe ours is very collaborative. Like, I mean, we have a group chat and when someone sells a house or or sells one of their listings, like it's like bombs are going off. There's so much cheering going on and and even just leads like it's hard when you're starting out. Where do you start from? Yeah. Right. Like, what do you do? How do you get listings? I mean, nobody wants the person who had no experience. Right. But everyone has to start somewhere. Yeah. So. You know, I, I really do think that uh, it's it's a good it's a good way to get your feet wet. And once again, whether you stay on the team or you're not, it's it's not necessarily a hit at the team. It just means that you know what you've grown now from here, and you're time to move on. Yeah. But uh, teams are the way to start, I do believe. Like it, I like it. Well, look, we're time we're almost up on our time here. Um, yeah. any like this went way too fast, by the way. We need to do this again sometime and talk a lot more. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, so any last words, any words of encouragement, anything that you any, you know, across the board, it could be all industries, your industry, whatever, any vibes you want to put out there. And also give me any plugs you have to at the end of this, please. Yeah, just, uh, you know, be, be a good, a good human, be kind, be positive, be authentic to yourself. Uh, don't be afraid to put yourself out there and uh, just lead with love and light. That's all I ever say to anybody at the end of the day. And of course it's the Kate product team on Instagram or agent.kate on Instagram, which is really the only platform that I really love. But I know that our team has like Facebook and all that other stuff. But uh, Instagram's my personal favorite. Awesome. Well, look, it's been a pleasure to meet you today. I've had an awesome time talking. I feel like we could rant and rave about this for hours on end. But I appreciate your time. And thank you so much. Yes, you too. Thanks again. Yes, ma'am.